which was contingent upon finding the right boy for boyhood. That was the only real thing we were, we were casting for. <laughs> only the only thing, because it was like Ethan, and then I, I called Patricia up and we <laughs> talked, and she kind of came aboard. Everything about this film was so weird, but that was kind of the weirdest, to be looking at an actor going, well, because usually you're casting like, are you, are you the right person for this role that we will in the next couple months, you know? Uh -huh. But this was like, well, who are you going to be in 10 years, you know? Yeah, it could get gnarly. When do you ever get to do that in yeah. this world, you know? So it was like, it was like finding the next Dalai Lama or something, <laughs> where you're just kind of like, well, how many little man, is this yours from, you know, we were, <laughs> no, but... We really just, we, we, we talked a lot, mm. and he told great stories, and he loved As movies. a six-year-old? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was, he was unlike any other six-year-old. He, he was already watching R-rated movies, and his music taste was, you know, that of a really cool, like, 14 or 15-year-old. What were your music tastes as a six-year-old? <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think, like, Pink Floyd and uh, Radiohead. Wait, and Rage Against the Machine. Ray, yeah, too. I guess it was more like <laughs> His dad's heavy musician. metal at that point. Yeah, was, yeah we I unearthed it. Became interview. less angry as I got older. I, yeah. <laughs> but you know, all joking aside about all that, um, from my position in the, you know, organization or wherever it is, I knew in an ancillary way. I, you know, here I was living in New York and here in Rick, well, I, I found him, you yeah. mm -hmm. and. I really basically felt immediately, well, that's the decision you made that the whole thing rests on. Mm. Yeah. And that there's a certain bit that the movie could handle when the kids were young, that there's a certain, all children are beautiful. Do you know, they, mm -hmm. they really are, and so it's all okay. The big thing was who Eller evolved into as a young man. You know, not to talk about you in the third person, but it was a really beautiful, <laughs> It was a beautiful, yeah. that young kid who was into Rage Against the Machine and with the cutoff jeans, when he turned 12 or 13, he started having something to say about art and about storytelling and about your own life. And you, you two understood each other in a, in a nonverbal and a verbal way that made uh, the filmmaking extremely easy. Did you know who <laughs> these guys were or did you have any concept of, I'm going to be growing up on screen? <laughs> Um, I mean, yeah, I had, I, I don't know, I mean, I knew who they were as much as, you, it's like, the idea of, like, what a, like, famous, like, movie person is, is pretty abstract when you're six, and also the idea of 12 years is pretty abstract when you're six. <laughs> Twice your life. Um, <laughs> the next 12 years is, like, hard to wrap my head around now, but as a six-year-old, it's pure fantasy. Um, I mean, I think I understood as much as I could, you know? I, yeah had been around a lot of like weird art projects and so it sort of made sense. Yeah. <laughs> you were excited about it. And yeah. Eller would yeah, never waver. Excited. People always ask like, oh well, did you was that year you wanted to quit or did you ever you know, he, he was always ready. Mm. You just call up, hey let's go have lunch. Let's talk about you know next year's thing or what we're doing. And he was just always there. It's Mr. Consistency. Always excited, always mm. bringing everything he Didn't had. Did you bike over to his year. house sometimes like you guys sort of hung out? <laughs> Yeah, we'd hang out a little bit. And it got, as he got he would older, have lunch. Yeah, he would call up and say, hey, I'm thinking about getting an earring. Would that be okay for my character? You know, like I was, <laughs> things like say? that. He was just always very conscious of. Did you let him get you know, an earring? So, yeah, I let him get an earring. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> He's not my kid. He can do whatever he wants. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. but I think I did preface it. What, is that what guys your age are doing? Is that, is that going to work in the movie? It's like, oh, okay, fine. <laughs> That's not out of the norm because, you know. When you first saw the film, when did you first see it in its completed state? Uh, How, what was your reaction? About a month before Sundance, I guess. Um, I, don't, I wept for like two days. Mm. Um, <laughs> it was a lot to take in. <laughs> I didn't but hear from him for a while. I, uh, yeah, Rick was like, hey, you should take this and watch it alone. It's going to be intense. And it, it was intense. What um, was it about? What was the intensity? What was? I don't I mean, I think the way we age is something and the way you change over time is something that you know you spend your whole life kind of wondering about and trying to put your finger on and you know you can look at pictures but it's entirely different to see it like this and uh, I don't know it was just kind of an overflowing of emotions um, I've seen it like a dozen times now and I just this last time I watched it was the first time in months and
is the first time I've been able to like see Mason as a character and mm. not like this weird warped version of myself, <laughs> um, which is great. It's much less stressful mm. that way. <laughs> but I knew we were putting particularly, you know, Eller and Lorelai in a really unique position. I don't think an actor's ever been in. Like, people have been documented, I guess, in documentaries and things like that over time. But in a narrative piece, where, you know, it's it's a fictional character, but it is a representation of them mm. through through all these years. I knew that would be a pretty big thing to to take in. Mm.